great to be here. Once again, my name is Mr. Chow. I teach biology here at Beckman High School, and it's, tr it's truly an honor for me to speak to you tonight. Uh, before we begin, I'd like to say uh, just a few words of thanks. Uh, first, to my lovely wife, to my family, to my wife's family, to our awesome teachers here at Beckman High School, to our administration, to our TEDx club, and most of all, to all of you, all of my students who keep me or who encourage me to keep doing what I'm doing every single day. So round of applause for yourselves. You know, for, for those of you who really know me, I don't like change. Especially when things are going great, why should we change them? But I think we can all agree in this room that change is inevitable. It's always going to happen. Hence our theme tonight, transitions. So you're all going to probably graduate. Y'all gonna grow up. You're gonna have the responsibility to pay your taxes at some point. Maybe you'll get a boyfriend or girlfriend. Maybe you'll break up. Or maybe you'll get married. Or who knows, maybe you'll even become a teacher at your old high school, Beckman High School. <laughs> Anything is possible. But what if I told you that there is something that doesn't need to be changed? What if I told you that there's something that can stay the same? Can we say, ooh? ooh. Oh yeah, that was good. <laughs> so, whether or not you're five years old, 15, 50, or 100 years old, this one thing can stay the same. Not only that, if you focus on this one word throughout your life, you'll be successful. Can we say, oh yeah? Oh yeah. <laughs> what a great clap. <laughs> so, want to know what it is? I'll get back to it in a moment. You know, I'm a big believer that everything in life happens for a reason. Throughout, throughout the summer of my freshman to sophomore year here at Beckman High School, I got my first job. I was 15 years old. I worked at Chick Sporting Goods right here selling running shoes and athletic apparel. But I, but I really focused in on where I really worked a lot in the shoe department. And I loved my job. Not only was I on, on commission sales and I made pretty good money at 15 years old, but I got to talk to a lot of people, and I got to get to know a lot of people, and I got to build relationships at a young age. Well, after three years of working at Chick Sporting Goods, as I was a student here, um, I got into my dream college, UC Irvine, and it made me um, have to find a different uh, job. For somehow, some reason, I ended up in Laguna Woods, AKA Leisure World, working at a bank. And, it, and for those of you who don't know where Leisure World is, or Laguna Woods is, it's a city right next to Laguna Hills, and it's actually a retirement community for people 55 and over. I would say the average age of the customers at our bank was about 80 years old, with my oldest uh, client being 103 years old. And guess what? He was still driving. So look out for him. So I can honestly look at all of you today and tell you that within those next four years working at that bank in Laguna Woods, I learned the most about life. Talking to the wonderful elderly. And I learned wisdom. Can we say wisdom? Yeah. Lots of wisdom. So I love my elderly. Okay, and that's a statement. Um, I want to tell you a quick story here about an Uber driver in New York City. And uh, my, my wife told me a story a couple years ago, and I, want, I just want to share it with you. So, so there was this young Uber driver who was, who was ambitious, had a lot of debt, worked overtime most days, about 12 hours a day. And um, one day at the very end of his shift, he got one last call. And he was like, you know what, should I just go home? I'm pretty tired. Or should I just take one more passenger to their destination? He's like, all right, fine, I'll take one more passenger. So, he puts it into his little phone and he gets to the destination and he pulls up to this house and this house looks like it's a pretty old house. And uh, he waits for about five minutes and no one's out there and, and, and no one comes out at all. And um, so, he, so he calls the person and he says, hey, how's it going? Like, and I just wanna let you know that I'm outside waiting for you and your Uber is ready to go. And then the lady says, oh, I'll be right out. Uh, just give me about five more minutes. And he's like, okay, no problem. I just want to let you know that I'm here. He waits 15 minutes. And the whole time he's like, are you serious right now? I was about to go home, get some good food, rest. And now I've got to wait for this person. And who knows if they'll even show up. 
So after 15 minutes, he calls her again and says, hey, I just want to let you know that I'm waiting for you out here. And then the lady's like, you know what? Can you come in and help me with my bags? And, and you're like, in his head, he was like, I'm in Uber service, right? I'm, I'm not here to provide that additional service of bringing your bags to my car. But you know what? Yeah, sure. I'll come on in. He goes to the door, knocks on him. And, and his lady's got like four bags. And he's like, oh, she must be going on a trip or something. He helps her grab all the bags. And all of a sudden, like, the lady finally makes it out to the car. And he's like, okay, hey. So where can I take you to today? Where would you like to go? And she says, you know what? Before you take me to my destination, can you just drive me around town? And the guy's like, or like in his head, he's like, with all due respect, ma'am, this is the end of my shift, and I just want to take you to your destination. Um, You know, you can call a cab or something. Maybe they can drive you around. And then all of a sudden, she's like, I'll pay you. And then he's like, oh, absolutely. Run the meter. So they start driving around town. And the whole time, the Uber driver's thinking, what's up with this lady? You know, like she keeps pointing out these little destinate or like these little landmarks around town. Like, for example, she was like, that's where me and my husband met. That's where my kids went to school growing up. That's where, that's the church that we got married at. And the whole time, he was like, what is going on there? And then all of a sudden, after an hour of driving around town, is, and after she pointed out dozens of locations, she finally said, okay, I think I'm ready for you to take me to my destination. And he's like, okay, and where is that, ma'am? And then she gives him the address, he punches it in. And he's rolling up to this, to this place he's never seen. So as they get there, he's rolling up to this place he's never seen. And all of a sudden, he noticed that it was a hospice care. Y'all know what a hospice care is? It's a place where you go to, to die. And then in that moment, this this young boy quickly noticed, my goodness, I just gave this lady the last trip of her life. And I was a jerk about it. Here I am being so young, being so privileged enough to have my freedom. And yet this lady had no one to even take her to the hospice care. She called an Uber. You know, I'm actually impressed with myself because usually when I tell that story, I end up crying. Every time I've told that story, I've cried. Why? Because I think of my wife. I think of my mother. But ultimately, I feel like a lot of us are like that Uber driver. Myself included, I'm guilty for it. And I also feel like so often, We're so absorbed in our work that we forget to, what everybody? Value what? Appreciate and what? Recognize Recognize those we're actually working for. So life is about love. Ding. (laughs) Thank you. So ultimately, my message to you is this. Life is about love. And the one thing that should never change as you transition through life, even as life changes, is our love for one another. To finally further illustrate this point, here's a story I tell my students every year. And this one gets me too, but I'm gonna tell you the quick version. What if all of a sudden an accident happens and your doctor tells you that you have two months to live? The whole Beckman High School uh, community feels bad for you, grieves with you. We start a GoFundMe page and you get a million dollars. So I always ask my students, what would you do with two months to live and a million dollars? And then usually like they start talking. And then all of a sudden after they, they discuss, I say, you know what? Doctor gives you a call again and says, you know what? I totally messed up your diagnosis. You don't have two months to live. You have two weeks to live. But you still got a million dollars. So they like sit and start talking. Oh, well, I do this, I do this, etc." And all of a sudden I say, you know what? You've got the worst doctor in the world. He calls you one last time and he says, you don't have two weeks to live. You have two hours to live. Right now, it's 6.26 p.m. At 8.26, you'll spontaneously combust. (laughs) But guess what? You got a million dollars, so what would you do? The main point of my story is this. So I've asked this question to about 5,000 people over the past two, three years in all the talks that I do around our community. And every single person has the same answer. If I had two months to live and a million dollars, I'd travel. I'd buy things. I'd drive a Ferrari. I do all these great things. 
I do everything on my bucket list. But guess what everybody says? If I had two hours to live and a million dollars, I wouldn't focus on a lot of stuff. If I had two hours, family, friends, loved ones, I would surround myself with the people who, who matter the most to me in my life. And my biggest thing is this. If you already know that at the end of your life, that's what you're going to want, then what would your whole life be like if you lived like that? If you made that a priority in life, that, that no matter what, no matter how busy you get, no matter what happens in life, you always focus on love. So the one thing that should never change in life, everybody, your love for others. Let's put our hands together for that. Woo!